Hello folks and welcome to a rather unscheduled part two of a review. The item in question under review is this thing. This is a topping D50S DAC. Now you can see the original review and I'll put a little link up yonder for you to click on and you will notice if you look at that review that I quite liked this DAC. It has a rather luxurious feel for its £250 has a rather weighty CNC aluminium block kind of feel to it. It's fully featured, it has a coax port, optical, it has built-in Bluetooth and USB. In performance terms, I like this a lot considering the price and the features on offer. The only technical issue I had at the time, and I didn't really think much of it at the time, was a single cutout as I was listening to the music via the coax port. This happened on one occasion and I didn't really hold much sway to the actual cutout itself because I thought it was my fault. I thought I had been the cause of that cutout. I thought I hadn't pushed the coax cable firmly enough onto the D50S socket and I thought the unlocking of the coax signal was down to me not pushing this cable onto the sockets. Now this has happened once before when I was just rushing around and hadn't paid enough attention so there's precedence to this and I just thought I'd done that again so I heard the cutout and I carried on and I never heard that cutout after that one occurrence and I completed the review and everything was fine apparently. It was after the video review was published that two channel members separately, individually, contacted me and said there may be an issue with this DAC. One channel member stated that he'd heard of issues occurring from D50 users posting on social media. Another actually owned a D50S and also reported problems of his own. A third reported no problems at all, but I subsequently found the reason was he never used the coax port. This third member actually did a quick sound test using the coax socket and sure enough triggered sound dropouts. And if you read the comments section in that original review, you'll see the reports for yourself. But basically the reports centered around regular and consistent dropouts of sound using the coax port. No other ports, just the coax port. So I looked around the internet and sure enough, I found users reporting coax related dropout issues in other forums. Now, as I say, I hadn't encountered that sort of persistent behavior, but it did get me wondering about that single coax dropout I had experienced during the review. So I hooked up my system again. I put the D50S back in the hi-fi chain. I put my Alison Moyer CD, the greatest hits I'd used in the original review, and I sat down for an extended session. And it wasn't long before the persistent coax sound dropouts occurred for me as well. More disturbingly, as time progressed, a pattern started to form where each sound drop would occur every few minutes. And it happened like this. Every time there was a new track, give it say two to three minutes, it varied on track per track, but around two to three minutes, there would be a single dropout. Basically the sound would cut for one, two seconds. It would go back into the track and the track would finish as per normal with no other issues. When the next track started to play, after another two to three minutes, again, there would be a one to two second sound dropout, back would come the music, it would finish fine, and so on. This pattern occurred on a regular basis. So there was a problem. And what was I to do about this? Well, the obvious solution would be to contact the company. Now, if this DAC had been produced by a UK company or one in Europe, or one in the USA, I would get on the phone, I would call the company direct, and I would ask, what on earth is going on? And what you're going to do about it? But Topping is a Chinese company, and I wondered if that approach A, would work, and B, 
I'd even get that far. Now, I've never dealt personally with a Chinese company, but I had a feeling I would have one chance at this and I didn't want to mess up. So I thought to myself, how do I go about this? I didn't want the door slammed in my face. And worse, I didn't want to be faced with a couple of sentences of PR speak and told to walk away like a good little boy. Now in the UK, Topping happens to be distributed by a respected company, a distributor called Electromod. Now Electromod distributes a whole host of well-known brands, as you can see here, and they've been doing this very well for a number of years. And the owner, a guy named Mark Dolbier, has an engineering background, and he is very good in terms of customer service and customer support. So I thought I would talk to him. Firstly, well, it's polite, because if you have a local distributor handling a brand that you're reviewing or dealing with, it's just a polite, good-mannered thing to do, to report any issues to your distributor. But that wasn't the only reason I thought I would call him. Firstly, I thought Electromod would have contacts on the inside of Topping as a company. Contacts I'm not aware of. Electromod would also have an open channel of communication. And finally, and maybe more critically, both Electromod and Topping have a financial connection and a financial commitment. Hence, any queries from this distributor will probably hold more sway and more influence than anything I can offer. So I duly reported the issue to Electromod and they obviously were very concerned. And good on them, they leapt, very proactive indeed, and contacted Topping straight away. They said to me they would get back to me in a couple of days with some sort of response. Now, talking to a Chinese company is a little bit different than talking to a company we may experience in the West. When I say that, you're talking about manners. You're talking about being very polite. You have to couch your questions in a delicate way. It's a dance of diplomacy, shall we say. Now, from what I hear, a number of emails were exchanged and a picture was slowly built up. After the exchange of emails was completed, Electromod came back to me and they've issued a statement. And this is what that statement says. And I quote, as the UK distributor of many brands, we take product issues very seriously. Since Paul, that's me folks, alerted us to the topping dark issue, we emailed topping audio to try and find out more. Unfortunately, topping has said that it cannot resolve the issue. Reportedly, the audio problems heard with the D50S DAC are caused by the Cirrus Logic receiver chip. According to Topping, this chip will struggle to work efficiently if faced with an unstable or irregular signals which they refer to as jitter. This audio issue also affects all topping DACs featuring the Cirrus Logic receiver chip, which includes the D50S, as you know, but also the DX7 Pro, the D30 Pro, and the new batch, not the old batch, but the new batch of E30 DACs. According to our tests, this audio dropout issue does not affect other inputs, only the coax input. And Electromod finished this statement by saying, if you have purchased a topping DAC through Electromod and you have any issues, please call or email us to discuss it further. Now, before I go any further, I just want to thank Electromod for all their efforts in contacting topping and being so proactive when faced with my queries. They did everything they could to help, and I applaud them for being so cooperative. Even so, that statement is interesting, and I find some of the detail offered by Topping confusing. The first point I'd like to discuss is that they say they cannot resolve this issue. Not that they will not, but they cannot. Is that because topping itself has been forced into some sort of corner? 
I've no idea. We can speculate, of course. Now, a receiver chip in a DAC is a sort of management housekeeper of sorts, and previously, Topping have used receiver chips from AKM. But last year, the AKM factory burnt down and was destroyed, so obviously that option is a no-go. AKM products are comparatively rare right now because they are being produced by license from a number of assigned third parties. Because of that, AKM chips have inflated prices, the sorts of prices that, say, a car company can afford, but mere old hi-fi manufacturers probably cannot. Now, that situation will remain so for some time while AKM rebuilds. So maybe any question of replacing the Cirrus Logic with an alternative chip is out of the question. I just don't know. So to remind you, the reported issue is with the Cirrus Logic receiver chip. In this case, it's a CS8416. So if that's the issue, I thought, let's give Cirrus Logic a call. So I did. I called the London HQ of Cirrus Logic and tried to find the right people to talk to. But that was impossible. So I tried another HQ. They have a few of them, guys. I tried a second one again. I tried to get in touch with the right people and failed miserably to do that. Now, I wonder whether the current world situation has contributed to that issue. Maybe the people I need to talk to are just not on site. Maybe they're working from home. Maybe they're unavailable for other reasons. I don't know. And I'm sure if I persisted over weeks and months, I'd eventually find the people I need to talk to. But time defeated me, and I felt that my priority here was to let as many owners and prospective owners of the D50S DAC know the technical issues before the story itself grew stale. What I did manage to find was a design document. This is freely available on the internet, and I'll put a link down in the description. You can have a look yourself. It has all kinds of information about this one chip. What I found interesting was the date, which is August 2007. That's the date on the design document. So I assume this chip has been going since at least that time. So that being the case, I'm not sure why such a mature chip should suddenly decide to fail and become a major problem. During my admittedly relatively brief time researching this chip, I couldn't find other examples where the CS8416 was causing similar sonic issues to that found in the D50S. And if it has, then of course I'd be very happy to hear from you. Please let me know if you do know of any issues around this particular chip. I can't find any, but if you happen to have any evidence of any problems, I'd love to know. So I remained confused. So I went back to my hi-fi where the D50S was all connected. And I thought I'd do a few of my own simple tests to see if I could make any sort of progress. So I thought I'd start changing some variables around my digital chain. Firstly, I shut down my hi-fi. I wondered if there was an initial coax locking issue and if powering up each component at different times might have an effect on obtaining a coax lock. So my DAC was attached to an Audiolab CD transport. So I powered up my CD transport first and then the DAC, but the issue still remained. So. I powered up the DAC first and then the CD transport. No change, the errors were still there. So I started messing about with the internal software. I changed the filters. I turned the Bluetooth on and off thinking maybe Bluetooth was interfering in some way. I even reversed the direction of the digital cable, but to no effect, the errors still remained. And then I looked at that same cable. And I wondered to myself, so I removed cable number one and I inserted cable number two. And you know what? It worked. Everything was 
fine. This time there were no sound issues at all. None. There were, I repeat, no dropouts. The DAC worked perfectly. So was the change of cable the answer? I continued to play this Alison Moye CD right to the very end. Every single track was fine. No dropouts occurred at all. So I tried a second CD just to make absolutely sure and that was fine as well. No dropouts at all. So I changed the cable once more and I put in cable number three. No problem. No dropouts. The sound miraculously was absolutely perfect. I played both CDs. No problems. Everything was fine. Which pointed a finger at cable number one. So I took out cable number three, which was fine. I put in cable number one, which is where all the errors occurred. And I played my CDs again through this troublesome cable, cable number one. And you know what, guys? You know what's coming, don't you? Everything was fine. There were no dropouts. So let me reiterate, this particular cable I had put back in, cable number one, was now producing perfect sound. No dropouts. I repeat, no dropouts. Everything was fine. So I cycled all the cables, one after another. Three different manufacturers, three different price points, three different types of digital cable. Every single one was fine. No dropouts. The DAC was working perfectly. Now, as you can imagine, I was a mite confused. So I tried to break the DAC. I disconnected the coax cable and reattached it again to break the lock. Everything worked fine. So I moved to USB, then optical, then Bluetooth mode, playing music through each, and then back to coax to again break that lock. And when I arrived back at the coax connection, everything worked fine. So in desperation, I disconnected and reconnected the RCA cables, but no change. Everything worked fine. So I was struggling now. I was struggling to find out why all of a sudden the DAC was working. And I wondered, time. Time was the only variable I hadn't tested. Was this thing warming up? Was it, as it were, burning in and then working for some strange reason? So I switched everything off. I turned off my entire hi-fi. I disconnected the DAC from the socket and I walked away and I had my dinner and I went to bed and I got up the next morning and I turned everything back on. So what we have now is a hi-fi system and more importantly a DAC which was as it were stone cold. And guess what happened? Everything was fine. It all worked. First time. No problems. I changed cables. I changed CD players. I messed about with settings. It worked. It worked. Fine. So is that the solution then? If you have the same issue as I'm experiencing with a D50S, if you run your D50S in for several hours, let's say 24 hours for the sake of arguments, because I was running and testing my particular DAC for a fair amount of time. Am I saying that your DAC will also work fine? No, I'm not, because I don't know what's actually happened here. So I can't say with any sort of confidence that running in, as it were, your DAC will solve the problem. And of course, that doesn't rule out that the problem may reoccur again tomorrow, next week, next month, whenever. I'm not saying that this running in is a cure. I really don't know. Maybe my so-called solution was a fluke, a quirk, and nothing more than that. Having said that, it's worth a try. If you'd like to keep hold of this DAC, that is. It's also worth changing your coax cable, of course. Give that a go as well. So what sort of conclusion, <laughs> what sort of conclusion do I come to after these tests? Well, I find this entire video in many respects deeply unsatisfactory. I am completely 
frustrated that I haven't been able to come to a satisfactory solution. Based on the listening tests I have run through and the gamut of tweaking and switching around I've done here, the DAC appears to work fine after running in for a time. As I say, let's say 24 hours as my rough guesstimate in this particular case. And I repeat, I say appears because I have absolutely no faith at all that the problem has been solved. It may come back tomorrow, it may come back next week or next month. That's because the issue appeared to correct itself. I, nor anyone else, did anything to fix this thing. If the DAC can correct itself, it can also break itself all over again. Now, of course, I will keep my ears and eyes open to future developments from Topping, and I will update you if I hear any more. But let me say this. If you own a D50S and wish to use the coax socket, and not everyone does, let me remind you, some people just use the USB socket, then I hope that these tests at least helped to dispel a few theories and even offer a measure of optimism that your troublesome D50S can and possibly will be fully functional. But on the other hand, if you're a prospective customer, if you're thinking about buying a D50S, would I recommend buying one? I would say absolutely not. Not while this coax issue remains. There are plenty of other reliable DACs out there and I would choose one of those instead. And that's it folks. I'm sorry I haven't ended on a positive note. I did try my very best given the limited time I had to work with, but I hope it's to at least one or two of you, I hope it's been of some use. And I also hope to be in a more positive frame of mind with my next video, which should be following pretty shortly and I hope to see you then. Now before I go once again I'd like to thank you for your support and if you wouldn't mind just clicking on the subscribe if you haven't already and the like button that'd be much appreciated it just helps this channel to move on. There are a range of links in the description for you to check out including my Patreon page which also features some exclusive videos which you're not going to see on this channel but will be in that Patreon section. Just have a little look Prices there are very low indeed. There's also other links to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join, and also my website, which has a host of editorial, which I'm sure you will also enjoy. That's it, guys. Thanks for staying to the end of this video. And until next time, bye-bye for now.